There exists a threat from anti-hunting groups to politicians trying to give our land away, and we won't stand for it. Those vast western landscapes provide the space for our wildlife to thrive and a place for hunters and anglers to fuel the fire that sparks their soul. In this show, we share our love of hunting, fishing, and conservation. Here, we provide the foundation to meet these threats through passion and the grit of the American outdoorsman. Welcome to the Western Huntsman Podcast. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Western Huntsman Podcast. This is Jim Huntsman, your host, coming at you from the Broken Time studio right here in Clark Fork, Idaho. Glad you guys are tuning in. Uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit this week and uh, go. You guys know that um, I have this passion uh, for for music and and uh, chasing the music dream and, and the story behind all that. And so I've got this dude that I tracked down on Instagram who... Um, I happen to be going to one of his shows here. Uh, it's going to be up in Rexford, Montana. We're going to talk about that uh, coming up. And he is an up-and-coming artist out of Nashville, Tennessee. And his name is Wade Sapp. Wade, how you doing, brother? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How are you? Hey, not too bad. Not too bad for a Monday night. Um, I really appreciate you joining me, dude. This is this is going to be fun. Hey, man. I'm glad to be here. You know, I got to... I, I got to point something out, though, man, because I'm superstitious. Are, are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. On your Instagram, you are following following 666 people. So it's got the well, 666 up there. <laughs> I did listen to a lot of ACDC when I first started playing guitar. So maybe <laughs> that's got something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, that, that could, man. Um, man. Yeah, who knows? That's an accident. <laughs> well, jump on there and follow the Western Huntsman, and then you'll be you'll be in good shape. <laughs> six, six, seven. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, like I said, I I appreciate you joining me. I think this is uh this is going to be fun. I always really enjoy these kind of episodes. Um, let's let's kind of start out by give us like the snapshot of your background, where you grew up, and how you got into music, man. Right on. Um, so I'm originally from Okeechobee, Florida. Uh, I was born in the same hospital as Mel Tillis, believe it or not, down in Pahokee. Nice. And uh, anyhow, we, my mom uh, remarried a couple times and we moved around Florida. And when I was eight years old, we moved to Marietta, Georgia. And that's just northwest of Atlanta, kind of suburbs and, you know, strip malls and all that stuff. But oh, yeah, uh, but the cool thing about living outside of Atlanta is it is not redneck Florida. And, um, so I got to hear a lot of different styles of music when I, you know, once we moved up there and as a kid, I always, you know, loved listening. A lot of my friends in that area, they're listening to Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears and, you know, Nelly, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, but I, I liked Fox 97 out of Atlanta and, uh, that was the radio station that played oldies and it'd be everything from like, early 80s back you know to you name it and um when it was good uh, man so out all that to say um i always loved music as a kid and um i got a guitar when i was 14 years old and kind of myself how to play and um next thing i know i wrote a song and uh i probably was about eh, 18 or so when i wrote that song and fast forward to about 2010, uh, which was four years later, I went and played my first gig. And I didn't play my own songs at that gig. But um, anyway, that turned into, oh, well, the, that gig was solo on the side of a lake playing like we're going to do up there in Rexford. But uh, a little bit bigger, you know, up there yeah. in Rexford. <laughs> uh, and that that fast forwarded into uh you need a band if you want to sound like these records and i was like oh okay that makes sense and uh started playing shows around the atlanta area and open for bands like reckless kelly and um i actually opened for zach brown band once oh um, did you nice on the side on the side stage but you know still neither here nor there people got to hang out with them that night and it was fun but uh yeah 
And and so I just it's turned into this crazy damn thing that I, I think of um about have got good enough now where I can make a living doing it, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't think that people understand the struggle. Like when you say, you know, you open side stage for for like the Zach Brown band, that's actually a really big deal. And and people that don't play totally. and, and pursue music, you know, it, it might sound like not a big deal, but that's a big deal. That kind of stuff um is is it's so hard this pursuit of music and the pay sucks and the the expenses like just override the pay and and so i just want to like i don't know get that message out you know sometimes i'll say on stage you know i started this thing out and not man some guy said man i'll give you 150 dollars come in here on sunday and play for four hours and you can drink all the beer you want and i'm proud to say proud to say i still make that every night you know (laughs) oh yeah man yeah that because it's just the, i mean the hell that was 2010 and we're talking about 13 years now mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. um you know it's it's just i i say it with a smile guy guy clark is my uh one of my favorite artists of all time and songwriters and uh he's got a, a line in his song that goes ain't no money in poetry that's what sets the poet free and uh, I, that's what I live by, mm-hmm. you know. So if yeah. I start making re- really good money uh, and my song starts sucking, you'll know that the money is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no. I was <laughs> I was drinking water right when you said that. It's so true, man. Uh, <laughs> so at what point, Wade, did you like pick up and move to Nashville? Man, uh, I moved here in December of 2016. Okay. I wanted to move here about 10 years prior to that, 11 years prior to that. And uh, I don't know, man, it kind of like at, I used to buy a lot of mainstream country records. And uh, there was a point when I figured out that all those little names underneath of it. And this is when I still lived in Georgia um, underneath the names of the title of the tracks on on CDs. You see these little names in parentheses. And it's like. Mm-hmm what are these names and so i didn't know anything you know i so I look it up it's like oh that's the people that wrote the song those are the people that felt the emotion and i got incredibly offended i felt like i'd been lied to my entire life and i just boycotted nashville stupidly uh for 11 years because and if- you you felt like you got kind of it was rigged the system in a sense because the artist singing the song was not the originator of the song is that what you're saying yeah, a hundred percent. That was the way I felt at that time. Uh, yeah. Now, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am a songwriter. And I've got buddies that are songwriters here in town. Imagine that you hang out at the same bars and everybody writes songs. Now it's like, hey man, come over on Wednesday. You want? We'll sit around and play guitars. Next thing you know, you got a song out of it. So it's like, man, that song's pretty good. We ought to send that on up the shoot, and you know, one of the guys in the right might have a publishing deal, and so yeah, yeah, it's just it's just that you know, and and I I stupidly for years avoided this town um, for for just dumb reasons. I just felt like um, I had all the answers, you know. Yeah, we and all just, did, man. We all we all yeah, did. So I mean, don't I, like beat I, yourself I was up. 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, man, I. It's just the truth. And uh, so I, I say all that to say, um, if anybody's listening to this and is thinking about moving to Nashville to kind of pursue a songwriting career, you should have been here yesterday. And and uh, I don't know. I know what you're saying with the whole. It, it, there was like this feeling I used to have too, man, uh, like this bait and switch feeling I had. Uh, where it was like, oh man, I really like this song and I really like this artist and come to find out they didn't write any of them. And, and I get it, you know, some people just are not songwriters, but there's something a lot more authentic about people that perform the songs that they write. And, uh, it, it just, it bothered me. So I'm, I'm, but I'm super curious about, so I told you I'm, I'm a little longer in the tooth than you are. Um, I've been, I've been to Nashville several times. I, I used to go over there and, uh, I'd, I'd hit up all those, uh, those bars on, I don't, I don't remember what damn road it is, man, but, um, Broadway is it Broadway with all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and all those little bars and, and, uh, everybody, you know, had kind of a different twist to, to whatever music they were playing. And, and it, it like, 
wasn't enough for me to leave the West again because I, I got, I got stationed out in North Carolina and, um, you know, for, for a kid out West, it was just like this whole cultural shock. Uh, and, and I, I love yeah, North. Yes, totally. And the South grows on you, man. I, I miss the South and the, and the, like nobody throws a party like they do in the South. And, and so there's that aspect of it that I miss, but I didn't want to like go back to, uh, Nashville because, a, I didn't feel like I was good enough, which is true, and and B, it was like taking me away from what is my life, my you know what what my real passion is, which is hunting, and so, um, all that to say, what was Nashville like in actuality versus like what it was in your mind before you moved there? Just a city, you know. At the end of the day. It- I, when I first moved here, uh, I was just kind of like looking around at everybody as if they were in the music business. And it's the only reason you live in Nashville. And you start mm-hmm. to go, oh, that's kind of ridiculous, obviously. Um, but I still kind of operated that way. Um, what is it, what, what was the question again? Was it like, I'm, I'm just, what is the, I, I think that people, because I'm sure that somebody's going to be listening to this and they're like an aspiring singer songwriter kind of kind of person. Right. And they're going to be like, sure. you know, I'm going to move to Nashville and here's how it's going to be, because that's what it is in my mind gotcha. versus okay. what reality um, is. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, man, it's uh, it's it's big city life. So prepare yourself for that. If you're not used to a city, it is very much that uh, it is a small one as cities go in this country. But um, man what i thought it was like i got a good go in, I, I can go in both directions man i can go it was way worse and it was way freaking better because i've really? had uh, unbelievable experiences with some of my heroes um i've sat and talked with billy joe shaver for uh, over an hour you oh, know really? like yeah i mean just like if i hadn't moved to nashville it never would have happened and yeah. so you know like just stuff like that but i also slept in my van for six months because i just went out every single night to bars because that's the only way i knew how to network um maybe it was social anxiety and i needed to drink a little bit before i could start talking to people but who knows that's for my (laughs) therapist to figure out but um if you know a good one let me know but uh (laughs) um but man it just uh you know, Nashville's awesome. I, I think, I, again, I say if, if you're thinking about doing it, you should have been here yesterday. Seriously, because you're it's all up to you. It is a uh, it's like panning for gold every day, um, literally and figuratively. Has yeah, a Wade has a lot changed with like when when I thought of when I was a, an aspiring musician, when I thought of Nashville, I thought, OK. You go there, you get some gigs around town and you like hope and pray that some, you know, record exec falls in love with you, you know, listening to you play on, on, on what street did you say? Broadway or something. Sure. Sure. And, yeah. and you go get a record deal and, and, you know, the, what, you, you know, that whole storyline oh, yeah. uh, versus so, today where you can really uh, self promote and, and sell on the internet and, and do your own marketing and do your own thing outside of a record deal i i don't know what's like what's the difference there well i mean it all scales for one thing like there are smaller labels that will put records out for smaller artists and um man you look at a guy like philip bowen that was on your podcast he's a great example of somebody who has genuinely worked very freaking hard on his social media game and he's incredibly talented yeah and he has found something that works for him i actually knew about him uh before hearing him on your podcast uh just because it he's so popular on social media it came across uh my thing and i love fiddle too but oh yeah me too um, man i think i've lost my train of thought again man sorry this is this is no no it's cool man i I, I worked today full full disclosure (laughs) well and and full disclosure if 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 you haven't listened to many of my episodes you'll you'll quickly learn that we go down all sorts of different rabbit holes and and it's just i'm I'm bad about it but (laughs) so am i no man i i but i do want to know i i do want to know a little bit more about you in terms of 
like the lifestyle you grew up in and what influenced you to, because before I ask you that, I want to say like the, I, I wouldn't, I don't just let anybody music wise come on this show from a sense of, I, and I don't want to offend anybody, but I don't like most modern country. I just, I just don't like the whole bro country thing. I like your outlawish, uh, traditional sounding. It's it's unique. Um, it's it piqued my interest. I, I didn't really. I, I again, I'm trying to. I don't want to offend people because maybe you, oh, hell, man. maybe maybe hey. like your best friends in into bro country or something. I just I don't care for it, and so. Uh, yeah, your, I mean, your different strokes my... for different folks is, is yeah. all I can say to that. Um, you know, for some sure. people enjoy the more modern stuff. Um, um, to me, um, you didn't ask for how I feel, but I just think country music should sound like it came from the country, if that makes sense. Um, no, absolutely. And and that's just as a genre. I think it, it you know, country music is cool. Tom T. Hall is very damn cool. You know, like <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't have to you don't have to dress it up. Just play good songs and you'll be fine. Um, I, but I also side with you in the in the fact that I like a songwriter singer or singer songwriter, whichever you want it, way you want to slice it. Um, I, I just I, I like authenticity. Uh, I like progressive country. I like mm-hmm. people who bend things. But at some point. If if the music starts to sound urban, then it's no longer country. Uh, very early on, as a kid, I remember in a like a, a textbook, if you will, or maybe it was on a whiteboard or something, but it said country, suburbs, city. You know, there was a very defined, you know, section yeah. Uh, yeah. for everyone, or or rural, maybe is how it was pronounced. But uh, man, I I don't know. It's it, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm a traditionalist because there's plenty of psychedelia, psychedelia on my record and yeah. uh, rock and roll guitar. And, you know, I, I but if, man, if I you just, look at if you look at the traditional sense of country, that's what country music kind of derived out of, you know, and, and there was that that side of it. And, and there's always been, you know, like like country music has always had this umbrella and underneath that umbrella is is a little bit different take on on what people kind of you know what they how they define country music and i i i like that rock sound totally. I, I, and you know what i mean? Evolves, I mean totally sure i mean i, I don't know man I, I i feel like uh that whole you know fuck pop country you know thing is just kind of tired and who wants to hear that like if you don't like it just turn the channel man you yeah. know, there's a whole. Uh, Jason has put it like this: a whole lot of there's a whole lot of good burgers in the town. Nobody's forcing you to eat McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, true, true, man. Um, who like like back? You'd mentioned a couple folks, but like wh- inspirationally, what what kind of gets you ticking? Music wise, yeah, music wise. That's a big question, man. Um, I, I, I listen to tons of stuff. I mean, I'll listen to Lightning Hopkins and Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters one day. And then it's, uh, if I'm working on a car, it's usually Hank Jr. only. And uh, then, um, you know, sometimes yeah, I listen to all classic country, period, mm-hmm. full stop. You know, it doesn't matter what it was, is to that era, if it came out. 80s or prior i listen to all of it and uh i want to know more of it so i'm always looking for obscure stuff yeah um but that what really gets me ticking is just something that has truth in it and um it and really captures your emotions and just rips you a new one be it happy sad whatever um i love rock and roll too like zz top when I first heard Tush, I remember where I was at, and um, that was the first like time I heard music, and I was like, "Oh my god, what is this? You know, <laughs> what is th- who, who is this?" And it was oh, yeah. on, I was watching that movie, The Perfect Storm, and then I'm a fisherman, and so like that movie was pretty awesome. It was like before Deadliest Catch came out, you know, and sure, um, and 
just to imagine being one of those guys felt very empowering as a young fisherman. But <laughs> anyway, they're all on their first expedition or whatever. And, uh, you know, they all decided to get on the, the you know, the faded boat. And uh, they just, one of the guys picks up a boom box and presses play on the tape that's in it. And it's, you know, Oh yeah. And I, and so I went around doing that, that with my mouth, making that noise to adults that I knew trying to figure out what that song was. Cause back then no internet, uh, you know, no Shazam to hum into. And, uh, so man, one day this dude on a houseboat on a dock, um, down on Lake Alatoona outside of Atlanta, he was like, sap man, is this that song you was listening to? And I was like, yeah, man. He goes, that's ZZ Top, brother. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and you were hooked, hooked ever since. Man, huh? oh, it blew my mind. And so that that sent me down the classic rock rabbit hole. And that was when I was about twelve, you know. And so I got a guitar when I was fourteen. You can do the math. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, when I said that ACDC reference earlier, I was dead serious. You know. <laughs> oh man, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of us in that. I don't know. I, I don't want to say same generation but uh how old are you wait um 35 oh you're not that much younger than me i'm 42 so so i i'd yeah. say yeah same generation we all love that stuff especially musicians man it was like just this oh. i i always i always look at it like you have you have music for musicians and then you have music for non-musicians you, you know what i mean and, and there's there's definitely a difference um however those can bleed over into each other and so uh, I, I'm super curious about like where where do you want to go with this from a sense of like what does success look like to you? Man, I, to me, this is success right here. Just having somebody who gives a damn enough about my music to want to have me on their podcast and I and being dead serious. Um, every uh, day, I mean, that you get up, it's a successful day. Mm-hmm. But if, I, if for me, I'd like my mom to not have to work anymore, and I'd like to have a ranch in North Florida, and if somebody who's managing it while I'm on the road and doing what I want to do, and I want to eat food that comes from my land, and that goes for garden vegetables, which I love to grow, and you know, if I'm not hunting, I'd like to be eating beef that I grew or chickens I grew or eggs that they laid, you know. Oh, that's man, my you're... that's my dream is to have somebody that can handle that while I do what it takes to own all that. Yeah, that's excuse me. You're right at my and and bear with me, man. You you I I accident I went to grab my water bottle and I pulled the cord out of my headphones, so I kind of missed part part of what you said there. But um, <laughs> this is what happens when you record with uh with me over here. Basically, in North I Island. was telling everybody <laughs> that I. I <laughs> Basically, I was just telling everybody that I'm going to be an old hermit that you'll never see again. As soon as, <laughs> I got, as, soon as I've got the money to, <laughs> I'm I'm out of here. I'm going to go hunt for arrowheads and go fishing and hunt and raise beef and whatever, man. Just do anything uh, away from screens and, you know, hustle and bustle. But right now, I'm, you know, working as hard as I can to make that happen. Man, you should come see me in North Idaho, man. We're homesteaders up here. Um, so. yeah, no, it's, it's a thing up there, man. I've got some friends, uh, in Livingston that are very similar to that. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I, I know you like to hunt mule deer and I've never hunted one. I did clean one, one time with a buddy that shot one and, um, that same friend actually. And, um, man, it's, I'd love to come up there and just, you know, ha- I'd love to have a place up there. Talk about hank jr man <laughs> yeah man yeah just don't yeah, don't know, end up like hank jr but <laughs> yeah, yeah no that's it's it's a whole different lifestyle you know from a from a guy who's lived like in the south and and i've lived in a well i've lived in several states over the years um i i could tell you like the goal that you're you're talking about you know that whole living living on the land with the land close to the land kind of concept where you're self-reliant in your own, you know, what, whatever f- food you procure, um, you, you know, it's, it really is rewarding and it really ties into, and it offers a lot of insight for being a songwriter and, totally. and you know, it just, it gives you like this different 
mindset of freedom that no pun intended frees your mind up to write uninhibited uninhibited i I don't know if i'm making sense man but it's it's it you know every time i try to get super philosophical it it kind of blows back but i think i think you understand kind of what i'm driving at and and so and i don't care if you're in florida or or tennessee or montana or idaho you know anywhere that you're living like that and that kind of lifestyle um i think is just it's good for the soul and it it definitely make you a better songwriter man I, i i love it um well I agree, man. Uh, there's nothing like watching something grow that you planted from seed yeah. and then putting it, on, putting it on your plate or putting it in your freezer. You know, uh, it, man, I, that's the dream to me. Like, if you can get 100% self sufficient, yeah, man, what, you know, what more do you want out of life? Cause you could get rich and then get greedier and greedier and richer and richer and greedier and greedier and become a more horrible person by the day. Or you could just, you know, buy some freedom. You know, I had, I I was, I'm reading, uh, do you know who Cam Haynes is? He's like just perhaps, uh, perhaps one of the most prolifically successful elk hunters on the planet. And he wrote this, he's, he wrote a book called endure and I've been I've been going through the uh, I, I bought the audio book because I, I I have the hard copy, but now I'm listening to the audio part. And like I, I don't know how I missed it the first time I read it. This was months ago, but I'm I'm re-listening to it right now because it's um, an interesting story. But kind of what you just said there, what he talks about in it is he's he says you know it doesn't matter how big your bank account is or how big your company is or or, or how big of a badass you might be. The mountains are a great equalizer and nature is a great equalizer. So when you go out there to chase an elk or a mule deer or a whitetail or or whatever you're going after to to pursue, and I I know this is like a hunting concept, but it, it, it applies to so many different things in life. But when you hit that mountain, you're all equal. It doesn't matter how much money's in your bank account. It doesn't matter how nice of a car you drive. None of that stuff. it, it, It doesn't mean shit. It, we're all That's equal right. on the mountain, and and the pursuit is what it, it's it, nothing more humbling than going after a big, you know, Western uh, Rocky Mountain elk or something like that. You know, you know, whatever name your species, and and I really like that concept. And I don't know where I'm going with this, man. I told you we were going to go down some rabbit trails. Hey, man, I'm in. Um, my favorite thing about walking through the woods is you said rabbit trails got me thinking on it. Um, I like to bushwhack, you know, and just bail off in some national forest. And next thing I, you know, though, you get kind of in that zone where nothing means anything and mm-hmm. anything means nothing, you know. <laughs> next thing you know, totally. you, you kind of start finding game trails on accident. Like you, you're walking where a deer would walk, you know. I mean, it's path of least resistance when you're just trying to travel across terrain. And it's amazing um, when you're out there, it truly, you know, everything's leveled and uh, you're one with everything and you're also vulnerable as just like everything else is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just uh, an incredible release. There's nothing like it. Um, Yeah, man. Yeah. I I love the feeling. I, I, I like to go into places where I feel like I'm the first human to ever go there. The likelihood of it, it, most likely I'm not right, but the yeah, I mean, the land feels survey, like you are, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I feel like I'm the first human to like step foot in there, and maybe maybe the elk that just uh busted me and ran off, I'm the first human that elk has seen, kind of thing. And uh, it, yeah. it just uh, it it's just kind of imagine that, yes, yeah, seriously, man. So, are you going to do any of that when you come to Montana? I hope so, man. I mean, it's it's middle of summer, so I don't know like what y'all seasons are out there at all. Um, well, not a lot of hunt- I bet I could not a lot of hunting going on, but I, I mean, you can. Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, no, you, you need to come back in the fall and come hang with me, man. We'll That's go when hunting. I'm usually there. You know, I I go out there in October. Uh, I don't know. I'm 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 like three for six years now so <laughs> nice about half, about half of the time I, I make it out there at some point but i really hope i can hang around out there for a little bit on this run 
Yeah, you should, man. Um, let, let me know if you have extra time. I'd, I'd be happy to take you out and show you some spots or whatever. Uh, That'd be awesome. but I, I love showing off Idaho and Montana, uh, cause that, so let's talk about you this know, tour. I, I, yeah, let's do it. Well, sorry, I, did I cut you off there? Sorry. There's always this, this delay when we record on zoom and that's, that's why I don't normally do it. <laughs> there's a delay going on. Oh no, you didn't cut me off. Go ahead. So I've got, uh, uh, from, from like on your Instagram, which guys, if, uh, if you're listening, check out at Wade's or Wade Sap on Instagram, which that'll be in the show notes. Um, so you're playing in Spokane, Washington, 722, July 22nd. And then on the 23rd, you're in Rexford, uh, Montana, 25th, right. you're in Bozeman, Montana. And then the 26th, you're in Billings, Montana. So you're, you're kind of covering most of Montana, and then uh, you got this kind of oddball out there in Spokane. Um, and so yeah. I'm like, where I live, man, I'm right in between where you're going from Spokane to Rexford. I'm like the halfway point between those two. So um, I'm going to close that out. How'd you get lined up with this tour? And, and I wish uh, I had a day off between them. <laughs> I know, man. That, it's pretty tight. Like that, Montana's big country to cover that many miles and play another show the next night. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be uh, slinging the merch and, you know, slinging the strings and <laughs> yeah, singing the songs and dri- driving the miles. So that's yeah, man, part, part of it, man. Is that, is that the, uh, is that just like the Montana section of your tour or is that what you've got lined up for the summer so far? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know what the, the truth, the truth is um, Morgan's um, team hit me up and said, you know, can you open these dates? And I said, well, that's kind of far, but absolutely. I'd love to. And that's just the way it is. And, you know, the deeper you get down this rabbit hole of a music career, you realize that there's sometimes you got to take risks and, um, so you just kind of, you can't say no to some things. And for this, I jumped at the opportunity just because Morgan Wade is incredible, uh, at songwriting and she's a great performer. And I just know that uh, I'd I'd love to play for up there in Montana, and I don't get enough shows out that way. And uh, luckily, this opportunity came up, and it made it possible for me to make the travel make sense. It's it's funny how this whole thing happened to man. Uh, it, it had to be possibly a year. Yeah, I'm I'm here. Can I can you hear me? Silence or central. Folks, if you want to learn something new right alongside me, check it out at silencercentral.com. I've never put a suppressor on any of my weapons, but I'm going to start now. And I'm using Silencer Central to help get me started because they walk you through the whole process. To include, you can ship the rifle to them, they'll thread it, they'll put it on, and they will ship it back. And you can make payments on the whole thing while you wait for all the licensing to get approved, which they take care of for you. It's a great process, and it's a great company, American manufacturer, right there in South Dakota. And we are really excited to be partnering with them. So check it out at silencercentral.com or give them a call at 888-781-8778 and let them know that you heard it on the Western Huntsman. Hoffman Boots is my go-to boot. I love the Explorers in the 8-inch, and they've got the Vibram sole, totally waterproof, no break-in period. They just glue your feet to the mountain. You can't ask for more out of a boot. And you don't have to break the bank to get a pair. So check it out at HoffmanBoots.com. Again, another American company. A local North Idaho friend of mine who runs this company decided to make some great hunting boots for all people that are serious about getting into the backcountry to chase elk and deer and bear and everything else out there. So check it out at HoffmanBoots.com. Use promo code all caps lock Huntsman 10 at checkout to save you 10%. Ready? I can hear you now. I don't know what happened there, man. Yeah, it started breaking up like a phone call. On uh, I just heard like a little bit of what you were saying. I, I don't know what the last thing you heard from me was. I'm not. I'm not totally sure. I, I heard you saying, "Hey, man, I can't hear you." But that's that we're still recording, so I'll just I'll just okay. chop it all out. No big deal. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, great. That would be awesome. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man. I got nervous there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we're back. Um, yep. So. We're back, guys. Uh, sorry about that. Again, um, if there is like people that work for Zoom, uh, the system kind of sucks sometimes. I'm not sure why it always does that. There's always one hiccup every show. Yeah. Well, we Technology, were talking. Man. I know. I know. It's good and bad. It's pretty frustrating sometimes. But um, we we were talking, uh, you know, about the tour. Um, and I was I, I think I was telling you about like a year ago, my daughter who is learning guitar, uh, Shiloh, she's like um, way into this chick named Morgan Wade. And and I, I'd never even heard of her. Right. And usually when the girls have a, a, an artist that they're they're interested in, it's usually not my thing or whatever. But uh, she bought a bunch of her songs and and I really liked it. And and she's really talented. And so that got us going down this uh, you're, i didn't lose you did, again did i no i'm here that so that got got us going down this uh you know path of of uh i was looking for uh, to take her to a concert but everywhere morgan wade was playing was 21 and over and my daughter's 14 <laughs> right and so uh finally this this uh show popped up in rexford montana and i saw your name on it i bought the tickets and then i ended up buying a bunch of your songs and so it's just funny how this whole thing, uh, you know, works out. So, um, <laughs> I like the song smoke. I, I, uh, you've got, you've got a lot of good, I don't know. I think it, maybe it'd be a good time for you to play a song. Yeah, man. I'd love to, um, tell you what, I want to play this one. Um, uh, this is a story song. It's kind of newer. Um, Um, this talks about that time when I was homeless. Nice. I've always had a wild imagination. The great outdoors framed my childhood. We'd load the van for a poor man's vacation. Camp all weekend in the woods. They were simple times we sure had good. I was just a kid, but I still understood. Sleeping under stars shows you who you are. Heaven ain't that far. When the coyote has I know what he's crying about Underneath the stars so I grew up, moved to Music City where concrete covers up the sky. The honky tonks took all of my penny. So I camped in my car a lot of nights. In a parking deck below the walk of fame. I dream that will one day be my name, sleeping under the stars, shows you who you are, heaven ain't that far, in the car. I know what he's crying about. Under 
need the star. Oh, 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 Something like that. <laughs> Man, I really like that. Um, th- th- let me ask you, did you, have you recorded that one yet? No, not yet. Um, I've got, you know, it logged and it's in my registry and all that for copyright and whatnot, but um, it, it's not, it has not been recorded. So I'm about to make a record uh, here real soon. I haven't talked much about this to anybody, but might as well debut it on this. Um, That's right. But yeah, I'm, I'm making a new record. So. so tell me about that, man. What's the process? Were you, were you like, what do you have everything set up in a studio? Is it through a record label? Is it, are, are you forking uh, out the dough for it? Well, tell me about it. So um, that's, the, that's the issue is like finding out who's paying for it. <laughs> but, yes. uh, <laughs> you know, that's always the thing. Um, but man, uh, the idea is to, well, I can't, I can't divulge, honestly. Um, I'm trying to think of sure. what I can say is that um, it will be great. <laughs> but, man, if um, that, if that the, song is on it, it will definitely be great, man. That That is the type you, of song that just kind of, it speaks to everybody. There, There's a way everybody can relate to that, especially, you know, me as a hunter that uh, I, I know, I know the struggle that you're, you're talking about and, it's it's the kind of song again it'll just speak to everybody so if that song's on there i'm buying it man well thanks man yeah we'll see i you know i talk it's kind of up it's up it's kind of up to me for the most part but I also take advice from the person producing it you know is the song does it fit with the other ones and you know i love that song because it's so honest and real and man like i was sleeping underneath like there's stars down there in like the uh Right in front of the Country Music Hall of Fame, they have like a miniature like Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's all country stars and mm-hmm. for some reason Kid Rock um, and uh, some <laughs> other people in there. But uh, anyway, um, interesting. Uh, I was sleeping in a parking deck right underneath that lawn, and uh, I worked at a boot store down on Broadway, and that they gave us a parking pass for that garage and. It was warm in the winter because it was underground. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. figured, why not? You know, I slept in my van and did what I had to do, make it through, and I'm still here. So you made it, man. And now, yeah. now you're just kind of, yeah, you know, all, you're living the dream in a in a sense. You know, you know, this. I I feel like you're you're in that time where you're gonna look back and think, man, those freaking days, like it, you made me who I am today kind of thing. And, and I just, I'm like, there's something, uh, envious. I, I have like this envy, uh, for well, what you're it's doing. E- it's definitely a uh, easy to romanticize, but when you're in it, oh, yeah. you don't know that you're going to ever get out of it. Is but, that, is that a fear of yours? What's that? The, like the, the fear that you'll never get out of it. Uh, well, I, I did get out of it though. Uh, what do you mean? I'm sorry. Just like the, 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 the part where I, I'm not talking about, obviously you got out of living in a van, um, right, right. right. And, and in that kind of situation, I'm talking more like the whole, the whole part. And again, this is something that people that have never pursued music in any, any capacity will never understand is it's really freaking hard, man. I, I don't even know how else oh, to yeah. say it. It's freaking hard. Well, There's... I, I kind of like I, I I've always rested on, you know, if I if I just want to like play music for a living, I can go back down to Florida, get myself a little concrete house and, you know, just play beach gigs up and down the coast and not that far of a region and make pretty damn good money playing covers. And so like sure. as an old man, I got my retirement po- plan already figured out. <laughs> yeah. Man. I'll go down there and margarita bell the hell out of them. You know what I used to do uh, to make extra money? Mar- margarita bill the hell out of them. <laughs> I love it, man. I used to go, and I don't know if this would even work in Nashville, but um, 
and you're you're beyond this part by the way this is just when back in the day when when all i did was music i was making like 200 dollars a week you know maybe maybe sure and uh i had to make sure the band was paid before me and and you know all that kind of stuff and so um, yeah buddy <laughs> i would go to these retirement homes uh, around it, like out of spokane washington and missoula montana uh and Coeur d'Alene, idaho all these places and they they actually paid good money man i would go at like lunchtime to these retirement homes and i'd play these old country songs and they'd pay me like 400 bucks to be there for an hour it was crazy good money for me back then. And I remember thinking like I had made it. This is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. I was going to, uh, uh, you know, play the bars on the weekends and the retirement homes during the week. And so I don't know if that's a thing out where you're at, but uh, it was, it was good. I'm going to find money. out. <laughs> yeah, you should, man. My you God. Should. I, I had like, I had like five or six of them on the hook. So every week I had like one or two of them lined up and, uh, that's what I, I, I put some of that money away. That's how I bought my new guitar or replaced strings. Man, you and, probably got like so many like molded jellos and stuff. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. It, it, there was, there was definitely molded jellos. And then I, I had a, a one cool gig. I, there, there was this dude ranch here in Idaho. Uh, they played or they paid like five or 600 bucks. And, and again, this dude, we're talking not quite 20 years ago, but 16, 16 ish years ago. And, uh, they paid like five, 600 bucks to come uh, and sit around the fire and play like, uh, real traditional cowboy, you know, Chris Ledoux style music around this dude ranch for these people that would travel from like France to get the, the American Western experience, you know? Wow. And you know what I learned about the French too, when they did that, because the one time they hired, I, we brought the whole band out and, and did this uh, night out at this dude ranch. And there are all these French people that don't even speak English. And they let their kids drink, man. So we had like these nine year olds right in front of the stage getting wasted on wine. And it man, was you a, gotta come to Okeechobee. <laughs> <laughs> same <laughs> story. Same, thing, same story, man. Hey, they're gonna live a long life. Wine hey, I swear I, I, I shit thee not. I have seen an eight year old kid come up with a solo cup and at, he's sitting on a damn porch swing. I, this really happened in front of my eyes. I'm not making this up. This eight-year-old kid is holding a solo cup. And he goes, Mama, I need a paper towel. I'm going to be spitting on my face if I don't have it. And so she comes <laughs> out and puts a paper towel in this son of a bitch's little solo cup. And he's sitting there dipping. You know, like, what is happening? Man? Dude, that does not surprise me. I love it. I love stories like that. It just, I just, I get a big kick out of it. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the spice of life, my friend. Spice of life, man. It's, it's what... Uh, Feeds the soul, <laughs> especially the songwriter's soul. You should write a song about that. You're I a good songwriter, dude. Hey, thanks, man. I like to write songs. It's uh, it's always a challenge, but I look at it kind of like I, I do a lot of random just carpentry and whatnot to make ends meet. And I, I actually refinished some chairs for Carlene Carter, who is Jim Carter's daughter. Oh, wow. Uh, Johnny Cash's stepdaughter. Yep. And, uh, Anyhow, man, I, I look at songs like this, the set of chairs that I redid for her. I, man, I put every bit of what I had into it and they came out amazing. I mean, they're beautiful chairs that I just kind of refinished and made them better than they were when she uh -huh. bought them new. So that's what I want to do with a song is make it better than it sounded in my head. You know, do you, do you have like a process that you follow every time you write a song? Like, like, no, I'm, I'm not disciplined enough for that, to be honest with you, man. But, um, I do, uh, not really care for BS too much, you know, and mm -hmm. that happens a lot in co writes. And that's just part, that's what's going to happen when you got four cooks in a kitchen, but, um, or however many, but, oh, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> A lot of times for me, it starts as a, a concise idea, you know, like um, I've got a song called Country Ham that's about my girlfriend's butt. And I just find it hilarious. And <laughs> I, I knew that I wanted it to be a country funk song because funk music is made for making more people and it's country, you know, so like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, so I wrote that song and I, I ought to play it now, but it's it's kind of a little bit too much of a rocker. I don't know how to come through on Zoom, but uh, it will be on that next record. Why don't we leave that one for the record? All right, we'll leave that one for the record. And I want I want the audience to know, too, 
Um, it's really difficult to pick up audio. Like I was having a hard time hearing your guitar, but it's recording on both ends. So I, I'm hoping it picked it up better. Um, okay. but I want the audience to know, like, you know, that's the challenge when we're doing these remote interviews. Uh, the audio is really difficult to pick up both guitar and, and vocals and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I'm trying, I'm like waiting for, uh, technology to catch up with that because I, I really like. I'd love to have you play more songs. I just, I don't know if it would pick up very well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, people can find my music and, you know, there's some stuff that's, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, definitely some stuff that's pre-recorded. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, I did I did some videos with a company called Our Vinyl um, years ago, and that was back in like 2019, early 2019. So okay. I want to hear what it sounded like pre-pandemic before I sat around and smoked uh, like a freight train, you know, for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good place to start. But uh, jokes aside, I've got a record out. It's called Radio Check. I just put it out less than a year ago. And um, I'm real proud of it. I made it with my very, very good friend, Aaron Hill. And we didn't make it in Nashville. Uh made it with my band and my buddy that produces records. And so uh, what you're hearing is not a Nashville record by any stretch of the imagination. It is just pure, unadulterated country rock, you know, music. Yeah, yeah. Did you, you guys just, you took the band into the studio, kind of record a live style? Um, the core four, which is your, you know, guitar that I'm playing and bass, drums, and lead guitar is live on that record. Um, there's nice. plenty of overdubs. Like the guitar player would double his solo or... I brought I, I did bring a pedal steel player from Nashville down because I don't if you know of a good pedal steel player, forgive me if you're in Atlanta uh and I and you're a great pedal steel player, I'm sure they are there, but I didn't know them. I couldn't find them. And so I brought down Brett Resnick uh from Nashville, who is a killer, unbelievable pedal steel guitar player. And also brought down Elizabeth Cook and she sang uh background vocals on nine of the ten songs. Nice. Didn't you? Didn't you like do either backup vocals for, or did he do them for you with with uh, Coulter Wall? Um. Well, so his vocal on that record was actually that take was when he still he lived in East Nashville for a while here. And that's where I met Coulter and ended up getting to go on tour with him a couple times and mm-hmm. uh, struck up a friendship. And I, I texted him the other day. I hadn't I hadn't talked to him much since he moved back to Canada, but, um, anyhow, yeah. um, uh, yeah, man. So we did that. We recorded that take, you know, so you, this day and age, you can plug in, literally you can take a phone recording and put it on a record, you know, and overdub, you can do whatever you want, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. And so, you know, that's how we, that's how we handled that. But the reason I did that, um, uh, on that particular song is because, uh, there's a, there's a lyric and it's called the boys we were, and that's the name of the song. And in that lyric, uh, I introduce the kind of the other person that was involved in my brother's arrest. And uh, he says something to my brother. And so for me to sing that sounded a little weird, which is I do it live all the time. But I thought, how cool would it be if I had this kind of gravelly, smoky, eerie cowboy come in and be the bad guy, you know, if yeah. you will. And, and he, when he got done wrapping up the vocal, I drove him back over to my house. Actually, I dropped him off at his house. Um, I was thinking I dropped him. His truck was here or something. But anyway, uh, he said, man, just call me if you ever need an asshole again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, one, one more real serious question, man. Yeah, man. So my, my journey as a musician began as a drummer and, and as a drummer, I would have a hard time determining whether I was more passionate about being a drummer or being a songwriter. I was better at playing drums. So the question is, you got a good drummer? Am I am I going to enjoy watching your drummer when I see you in Montana? Oh, yeah, you're going to love him cuz I'm playing solo in Montana. <laughs> oh. Oh, gotcha. You're doing it solo, huh? Yeah, man, I got to, you know, just to make it make sense. I mean, I'm flying across the country just for these gigs, so Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. You know. Yeah, we'll leave well, it there. If I if I came to Nashville to watch you, would I would I enjoy your drummer? 
Absolutely, man. I've got a bullpen. I mean, I, if if everything made sense financially and I had a, a route to get me out there with a band, we'd be there with a band. But um, this particular gig, they requested that I be solo. So, dude, man, I can I can I can round you up a band locally right here in about an hour. It's pretty, you know, backwoodsy, but. I'll send, you know, I'll send my, uh, my buddy, Will Foster. He'd blow your mind. Uh, he's the most amazing guitar slash mandolin slash slide guitar slash banjo player I've ever met in my life. And he, he, uh, he's like, lives like me up here in the sticks. There are so many great pickers out there. Every once in a while, I'll I'll just kind of like be, you know, tooling across like, I, I don't know. I think it's 89 that runs through Southern Utah. And like I pulled over on the side of the road and there was a jazz band playing at this random cafe type bistro restaurant or whatever. And they were incredible, man. Like, like upright yeah. bass and a guy playing Chet Atkins style guitar and just unbelievable band. They were all instrumental and um, it was, it was a welcome sight. But I also, another time I was at the mint in uh, Livingston, Montana and, mm-hmm you know pretty toasty at that point at the end of the night but uh, man a great country band was playing you know like what the heck man why why is this band not famous you know like i i hear great music out there every time i go out there and uh it just goes to show you you don't have to move to nashville to make it in music but you know the industry is definitely here and yeah. uh it's like you know it's like it's like deep sea fishing versus pond fishing. If that makes sense. Yep. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No. That's actually probably one of the better uh, analogies I've I've ever heard about it. So, well, cool, man. I'm I'm excited to I'm excited to see you play. I'm actually more excited that you're doing uh, doing it solo. Um, I I just I I have a thing for especially like just acoustic solo players, man. I just I I have a thing for that. Um. And uh, I, it's it's going to be a good time. I think both you and Morgan Wade uh, are you're both just like packed full of talent. Uh, great songwriters, great performers. Uh, really looking forward to your new record. Tell everybody where they can find you and where they can find your music. All right, um, you can pretty much find me anywhere on social media as at Wade Sap. That's W A D E S A P P. Or you can just go to wadesap dot com and it's got like all the links there for that uh on spotify amazon music apple music deezer i mean whatever you use if you search my name you should be able to find it and if you listen to sirius xm at all they play me on outlaw country oh nice okay i got you i just pulled up your website here so so guys listening i'm gonna have all those links in the show now the instagram the website um all that kind of stuff why is my internet not working you're still there right i'm here okay All right, so it's going to pull your website up, and then I'll link that in the show notes. And, um, man, I just i uh, I want you to keep me posted, man. I I want to kind of know how things are going, and and uh, when your new record comes out and you're ready to launch it, get, hit me up, dude. We'll get you back on the show and get, uh, yeah, you know, we got we, there's a lot of music fans in this here audience. So, uh, special shout out too to Michael Bozarth. I know you're going to be listening to this one. So, um. But yeah, I'd I'd love to I'd love to get you back on for something like that. I mean, I'd love to. I, I this has been fun, and uh, I look forward to meeting you at the show. I'll be at the merch booth for sure. So, and if y'all any of y'all want to come and say hey and get a koozie, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely get a koozie. I'll I, I might I might uh, you know what I'll do is I'll bring you some Western Huntsman swag too. Uh, but hopefully you got you got like a t shirt or something. Yes, sir. Sweet man, we'll stick on the line for just a minute, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the stop record button. And anything else you want uh, the audience to know about you, or, or where they can see you play, it, 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 whether it's out west or not. Man, uh, I, I would say just watch for uh, what I've announced. I mean, the best way to keep up with everything is on my social media. I'm especially active on Instagram. Cool. Sounds good, brother. Well, I, again, I appreciate it. Really looking forward to all this. And uh, we're going to stay in touch and, and we'll just talk soon. All right, brother. You made it. 
That's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure you're following us on Instagram at the Western Huntsman and write us a good review at Apple Podcasts. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Stay Western, and I'll see you on